Right, my name is Digital Native and I'm going to do a quick track breakdown of my latest release, Journey Through, which is currently out on Golf Art Records. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to stick them uh, in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you. Um, if you've not heard the track yet, um, you can stream, download that from all the usual places, uh, but let's get into it. So what we'll do first, have a quick listen through it if you're not familiar with it, just to get a feel for what it's all about. Okay, so start off by having a look at the drums. Let's have a quick listen. Um, so not a massive amount going on there. Um, it's kick, which is made up of a couple of layers. One's a bit more thuddy. The other one's just adding some tops. Um, let's have a look what's going on there. Just rolled off a little bit at the bottom. Pulled out uh, a frequency around there. Probably something that was clashing with something else, or maybe it was just making it a little bit thuddy. Um, nothing drastic. And then the top layer, I've just taken loads of the bottom end off. Um, snare those are all going to a group so i'll just solo that together so that's made up of four parts so clap just adding some top end rim just adding a bit of knock one from a break which it sounds like I've like rolled off the front end, I think. Just a bit of the transients, just a bit of low and high cut. For some reason that's got quite a bit of processing on it for that one thing, I don't know why. But yeah, I've rolled off some of the transient, obviously just to stop it um, interfering with the transients and other bits, bit of saturation. And then this is the main one, which I think is from Urban Dawn sample pack, I think. Again, that's got a bit of reverb on it by the look of it. Don't normally do that, uh, although that looks like it's turned down to zero. It might be something that's on a uh, bit of automation. Let's have a look. Yeah, so I've got a bit of automation on there just, uh, just to send it off into the breakdown. Um, yeah, and all those together. The main snare group has got uh, a little bit of EQ, I've rolled off quite high up actually on that. Um, wouldn't always normally go up that high necessarily, but just a little couple of boosts um, around about the fundamentals in there. Just pulled a little bit out there at the top or in the mids. And then I've got various uh, side chains going to different breaks or different things, so like the keys as an ARP, just to create a bit more space. After that, um, after that, there is what I'm calling the character break, which I'm not sure what that is. Just a drum loop that I've chopped up, all in audio. I think everything in this track is in audio, uh, in the drums. And. 
main shuffle. And another shuffle there. Just adding tops to that. In terms of processing, multiband shaper, obviously just tightening that up a little bit. I use these a fair bit on drums. Um, or I did anyway when I was doing this. I still use it, probably not as much now, but um, yeah, I just find really good for tightening up the mids and any room sound you've got in a break. Just really tightens that up. Um, bit of processing going on there, bit of saturation, a little bit of transient shaping, a little bit of limiting. Uh, what else we got? Some rides, which come in a little bit later on, just to sort of add to the uh, momentum. And they come along with the amens that come in at the same point. Uh, a little bit of compression there. Just wanted to take away all the transient, just so it was more like, I was getting the sort of, um, getting the frequency content of it, but not the, um, not the impact of it. Um, like I say, yeah, sort of a bit later on, I bring in this Amen. And that was just to really ramp up the uh, the energy, really, in the drums. And just to sort of take it off. If you listen to it with the rest of the track. just sort of takes it off somewhere in my mind I've got this idea of kind of maybe space like blasting it through space in a little spaceship and that was just giving that extra little bit of energy as though you were sort of flooring it that was in my mind that was kind of the picture I'd got um what else we got in there hats again nothing crazy rolling off low end pulling out a nasty frequency there and a little bit of a boost up the top um amen that's just straight off there, I haven't even chopped that up. Um, rolling off loads of the low end, so just getting the tops for that. And that's got a side chain on it by the look of it, which has been side chained from the snare. So we'll look if that's actually doing anything. Yeah. Just taking a little bit of the transient away on the snare in the uh, in the Amen. Sometimes I would t just totally take out a snare in another break if it was clashing, but with the Amen, it's got a really nice sort of, it's just a great break. It's just got loads of really nice tone to it. And taking out the snare sometimes, it can just um, it can just make it sound a little bit weird. So in this one, I'd left it in, but I just did a bit of side chain just to pull it back in a little bit. Um, and then any other things is there's a little think break, I think that comes in at some point later, just a bit of a shaker. Just a bit of a roll off on the bottom. That's also that's been side chained by the hi-hat. So obviously there's maybe a bit of clash in some of the frequencies between the hats. So just to um, duck that a little bit every now and again. And then the snare is pulling out uh, a little bit as well. And ozone imager, what we're doing there. Just adding a little bit of width to it. Um, just to liven them up a little bit. Um, I think the only thing left, apart from just like crashes and stuff, is a triangle. And that's just got the low end rolled off, nothing else by the look of it. Uh, pulling in a little bit on the on the release on the on a transient shaper, and that's it. Um, just notice I've just panned that to the left. There's probably a bit of panning going on as well in various different things. You see, just sometimes just a little bit, just to create a little bit of space in the centre. Sometimes I don't tend to go wild with panning, but just a little bit on some things. Generally, not the kick and snare. Um, but like the top elements and then all of the drums go to various different groups. So you've got the snare group um, And then I've got like the overall drums So all the drums are going here for some processing Just leave that bit Just turn all that off
So it's just adding a little bit of um, top end really. There's a bit, a little bit of compression, very light. Use the pull tack, which I use on, always use pretty standard on drum channel. Uh, boosting 100 around about the kick and then either 8 or sometimes 10 or sometimes 8 to 12 K just a little bit of a boost uh, A little bit of subtle saturation um, on, from the ozone exciter just in the top end and I think I'm just pushing the sides out just a little bit just to get a little bit more width. And then finally, going into this EQ, which I think this EQ is just here for um, automation. So if I have a look. Close down all these plugins. Yeah, there's just a little bit of EQ going on at various bits, so. Just into the breakdown. Pulling a little bit of the tops off, nothing mad. And then on this particular tune, I've gone into a final drum bus. I sometimes do this, sometimes don't, um, where everything um, had gone into there. So what that would include is obviously all the drum tracks from the groups, and then any um, any like parallel channels. So there are a couple of parallel channels. If I just solo the drums again. That is a parallel drum channel. Which is just the drum smashed to bits. Um, and I put I put a limiter on it, I think, just to see if it will... It's not actually doing anything by the look of it, but that was just a catch if there was anything going over. Um, and on this one, I've got... There's some EQ on there, but that's actually bypassed. And then I'd put an EQ on here. This is a tip I'd say, I can't remember if I've seen it now. Um, basically on your drum channels or on your parallel channels to have different sort of versions. And um, on that, the tip was to basically boost the low end and boost the highs, just to really sort of give it that weight. Um, so that's something that I tried on this track. I don't think I've done it since actually, but um, that's just something I did on this track, just to give a little bit more weight in the lows and the tops, and then kind of pulling a little bit out of the middle. Uh, and that's blended in with the main drums. And then there's saturation drums. I think I was trying to get a bit more crunch in the drums, but that's actually not doing anything. And then there's a drum verb as well. Um, let me do that. Uh, and then there's, yeah, there's like a, I've got that on a send. And then I'm using the stock reverb for that. I've rarely ever used this, to be honest, anymore. Um, I've obviously used it on this one. Um, but what I'm doing on that is rolling off the low end and then pulling out a couple of frequencies there that were may, maybe uh, like the fundamental frequencies in the drums could be around about something in the snare, something that was causing a bit of resonance in the reverb. And I tend to do that a fair bit is obviously always roll off something in the low end, but then it, pull out any resonant frequencies that cause those build-ups that can get a bit honky and just create sort of um, a bit of, um, like I say, a build-up or just like too much in a certain frequency area, um, which just clashes for other stuff. Because you want the, the v reverb to kind of sit around your drums. You want it to blend with them, but you don't want it to start um, interfering with the main kind of source sound. Um, and like I say, all those things then go into a final mix bus, which I then ran through Neutron Elements, which is a cool, really cool plugin actually. I use this for a few different bits. Um, you can pick this up free fairly often. I think I got this free uh, through having a supply subscription, I think. And that's just a little bit of EQ. There's a final in the chain. A little bit of uh, saturation and a really gentle little bit of compression. I listen without.
just really livens the drums up a little bit just makes them jump out a little bit more uh, and cut through in the mix and that's the drums essentially I don't think there's anything else going on in there uh, a couple of the odd percussion hits here and there um, just before the breakdown I think just ringing off into the uh, into the breakdown So the musical elements got a few layers in there. Um, the main part is these keys, uh, which comes from a sample, um, and I just chopped it up and sort of rearranged it to make the uh, like the sort of melody that I wanted. A lot of things going on on there. Um, let's just bypass all that. What I have noticed is, looking back at this, is, and, and this is something that I've tried to work on a little bit really, is adding just way too many things. Way too much processing to stuff that isn't really doing an awful lot. I mean, it sounds all right, um, but it probably didn't need all this on it. But let's have a look. So we've got a fairly steep low and high cut and a few nasties and a bit of sort of mud coming out there. A bit of compression. Side chain from the snare. Got another low and high cut in there. Uh, let me just get another look. That looks like it's got some automation on it. Yeah, there's a fair bit of automation going on with things in here. Yeah, the mod machine. So these are sort of things that I've put on to kind of add a bit of interest because it can get a little bit loopy. Um, so I just added in various little bits, opening up the uh, EQ just a little bit more, a little bit more in, or just adding a little bit of like effects into the breakdowns. So that's adding delay, that, that mod machine by the look of it. I don't use that very often, so yeah, a bit of delay. Um, just into the breakdown and stuff. Um, in the second half, I chopped it up slightly differently. Um, just, I didn't want to repeat the same thing. I wanted it to have just like a different vibe, take it off somewhere else. Sort of going off with that theme, that idea of, like I say, being it kind of some sort of space travel or something. Um, I wanted it to go off in a slightly different direction. So got the EQs just moving around. Some of that was kind of, I think to do with the fact that it was clashing with other bits in the track. So when I changed the melody, it was clashing elsewhere with other musical elements. So I just found by taking out the low end there, it took out any sort of bass or mid end of it and um, allowed it to sit a little bit better. And as you can see, just automating the delay, automating EQs, just to make it, um, yeah, just to make it interesting, really. Um, other than that, uh, the rest of the musical elements, so they're just kind of uh, melodic elements, just adding a little bit here and there. Uh, I've got a little guitar riff. Melodic run, let's see what that is. That's just a little snip out of a sample just to create a little sort of runner, just something that sits in the background. It's just adding to that sort of dense, um, sort of melodic um, sound of the track, really. Uh, little trill. Got a pad. Just taking a little bit of mud out, um, the bottom, high and low cut, compression, which is coming off the snare, which is normally the case. 
Looks like there's a bit of delay on there as well. Again, that's probably just like ringing out into the breakdowns and stuff. Uh, send delay level there. Um, so that's just got a massive. That's into the second drop. is in there. Oh, I've got a little uh, funky little guitar loop which I think I just chopped up and then rearranged it a lot. So zoom in. And then that's going to a delay send just to get it to just sort of ring round. And it sort of tails off at the end. Bit of EQ, pulling out some nasties, something that was probably clashing around the mids somewhere, just pulled all that out, low and high cut. A little bit of compression. Fairly short attack. Again, just to take away a little bit of the transient, stop it clashing with any other bits that are going on around there, in the drums or whatever. Um, Some high plinks it's called there, which are come in. What are they coming off? That's coming off rounds. Some really nice sounds off this. Um, they use it masses, but um, you can always find some nice, uh, some really cool sounds in there. And it's coming off the contour, which is, these are part of Reactor, these uh, Native Instruments Reactor. Just that build up, build up of melodic bits, really, just to keep it interesting throughout. Because I say the main thing is this keys, and it does, you know, it is very similar throughout. So I wanted to make it interesting without it necessarily changing an awful lot. Uh, something else that's in there is this runner. I do that's something I've done for a long time, really, quite often. A lot of tracks is this. I call it a runner. I don't know why I call it a runner. Probably because it just runs throughout a lot of the track. And it's just a loop of something, and sometimes it could be something I've resampled from somewhere else, or just a little snip out of a track uh, out of one of the elements, and I'll just get it to loop round and round and round. It's got a fairly severe EQ on that. And it just fills in that space. Let me take it out. Um, it sort of leaves a bit of a hole, so it's just filling it. It's just helping to keep it thicken up what's going on and just keep it nice and um, a nice dense sound in places. I think the only thing that's left is this piano, which I think when I first started the track, it was based around this piano. Um, and then I ended up finding the keys sample which was where the main element came from. So then this just became sort of like a, a little backing part, really. Um, and then it's got a bit of saturation on it, a bit of EQ, pulling out a load of mud and just sort of resonances, a bit of compression. And I think the way I've done this, I've got one, it says piano centre and then piano main. So I'm not quite sure what the difference is there. I think just EQ'd in slightly different ways, just to kind of thicken it up again and just, yeah. Um, make it sort of gel a little bit, make it cut through a little bit. Those go into a group on their own, which has got quite severe EQ because I'm basically cutting off all the top and low end because it's just sitting, it's, again, it's just kind of giving that denseness. Uh, to the sound, just filling in the melodic space. And then that's going into neutral elements, which is just doing a bit of EQ, a bit of a random looking EQ there. A bit of gentle compression and a bit of saturation. Those, all those musical elements are going into this musical group here. And just so they can be processed together, and they're going into uh, this neutral elements, which is just uh, giving some overall EQ. It's quite a nice EQ in here, so I do like this one. Um, 
bit of gentle compression and again a little bit of uh, exciter um, and they're going into a parallel channel so I wanted it to be quite like I say dense and, and uh, thicken up the sound even though it's quite a light track liquid track I wanted to sort of thicken it up so that's going into a parallel channel of its own um, which is this parallel B uh, just sort of boosting the highs and some of the mids pulling up at some of the bottom um, saturating it quite a lot just turn that up And then uh, a bit of EQ, uh, not EQ, a bit of compression. Um, just slamming it really. So then when you sort of blend that in with the main signal, same as you would with the drums, just thickens it up. Um, and that's all the musical elements. The next bit is the uh, the vocal that comes from a sample that I found a little vocal sample just a short it's just one short phrase um, it's got quite a severe sort of low and high cut on it because the main part of it comes from a pitched down version that's kind of where you get in there some of the higher end from um, in there but like the the high one just giving it a bit of saturation through the Kramer tape a bit of DS in which is not doing an awful lot and then a little bit of compression quite a lot of compression actually take it about 6 dB off just kind of squashing it because that wasn't the main one the main part of it because I pitched it down was the was the low one so I wanted to kind of squash that almost like it was in parallel with it so just really squash it and then just layer it with it just to give that bit of um, just a bit more tone to it a bit more definition um, so with it a bit less severe on the EQ low and high cut a couple of resonances again um, I probably duplicated the channel so it's going into pretty much the same things probably doing a little bit more yeah so it's taking a bit of the heart taking a bit of the uh, s's off at the top and that's just sort of taking off some of the peaks so a bit le less severe compression there and then i tend to put if it's got any saturation or anything like that i tend to put um a roll off the bottom i put an eq at the end of the chain because you normally end up getting it will normally bring up any of those low elements um, so just roll off after that so that's quite a, a useful thing to do I normally roll off at the beginning just to get off any uh, stuff we don't need and then after I've done any processing put a, an EQ at the end just to roll off afterwards so then apart from that there's some little vocal snips and stuff that have just got some delay added to them and I've kind of chopped bits out resampled them um, reverse them just on some various little bits just to add a bit of interest so things like this it's just little things like that just adding into the little bit of ear candy things that are going on in the background it doesn't make it too busy but they're all kind of because they're all coming off the main element of the vocal it just kind of sits and helps it to sort of uh, gel it together as one thing so you just haven't got that one vocal sample repeating no processing on that by the look of it at all on the vocal group uh, and then after that is then the effects and ambient bits which all go to a group as well uh, again no processing on that at all that's also going to the parallel channel so that's kind of being squashed again just to kind of thicken that up and br bring it up a little bit uh, any delays and stuff that are in there and all that kind of thing will just be like brought up and just um, bring them out much much more by squashing it like that um, so if I just zoom in a little bit so these are the um, effects elements some of them are just samples 
Um, and then some of them are things, again, it's quite a common thing that I do, is just I've resampled stuff that's in the track. So um, these ones at the bottom here, I believe, are things that I resampled and just recreated things, reversing things and adding effects to stuff, add a reverb to it, stretch it out, resample it, do something else to it, just to get some interesting little bits um, that I can use. I think the rest of these are from uh, samples, I think. So they're just little snips off the end of chords or um, pads and stuff. Um, so that's just... That's definitely something that I've resampled. So it says live resample record. So I've obviously recorded that into another track while I was playing around with something. And that's just got low and high cut on it. So I've just got a little guitar riff. Bit of white noise. Got a bit of a water sort of foley sound in there. Yeah, nothing. Get nothing earth shattering. Um, and probably not a great deal of processing on anything by the look of it. Probably just low cuts here and there. The odd frequency or just totally sort of taking out top and bottom um, all that stuff's just there to add that kind of depth add depth to it really um, and the final part of the track is the bass so the bass is relatively basic I think I think it's yeah it's just coming off massive um, I'll just turn all this off Uh, so it's just a sine wave and a square wave. Just a bit of saturation. Clipping. Distortion. Squashing the life out of it by the look of it with a compressor. A bit more compression. and then rolling off a lot of the tops and pulling out a couple of resonant frequencies or stuff around about where the kick is and stuff so that'll be where the kick sits there probably the snare's about there and then just making sure it's all in mono because quite a bit of stereo information going on in there um, all the effects that I've added in the various different bits are probably going to enhance that as well so just mono all that um, and I just wanted to get a really solid, thick bass line. So that's quite a lot of processing to add to that, but you just get a real solid uh, bass note so you don't get much fluctuation in level at all. We've got a bass group, let's have a quick look at that. Um, those are going into the max bass. is just gently um, sort of enhancing some of the upper mids uh, or sort of low mids should I say upper end of the bass and then into neutron elements which is just rolling off anything that I didn't need that was left at the top another little cut there uh, for the kick quite a severe amount of uh, saturation added at the end and then just a little bit of gentle uh, compression there. Yeah, so there's probably quite a few bits in this um, looking back that I've, I've over-processed maybe. So I would say that's something that's worth looking out for. Um, don't feel like you need to over-process things. Sometimes you can find yourself in a point where you're just adding more and more effects and processing to things um, unnecessarily. So. If it's a creative thing, then you know generally that's fine. But 
Um, sometimes I think you can go overboard. And I think there's a couple of bits in this. If I was to do this now, because I've made this, this was probably, I think I started this back in 2019. Um, there's a few bits that I probably wouldn't do in this, um, in my current workflow and what I do now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found something useful in there. Uh, again, as I said, if you've got any questions or comments, stick them below. If there's any videos you'd like to see me do or anything particular you'd like me to cover, then let me know. I want to start trying to get a little bit more content up on here over the next few weeks, months. So please do let me know. Um, if you haven't heard the track in full yet, you can go and find that in the usual places, Spotify, Bandcamp, uh, Beatport, all the usual places. And if you want to come and find me on the socials, then I'll stick links in the description below. All right, cheers.